All right, there are some times that. Sorry, welcome to this video. Now, in this video, we are going to look at the case whereby when you do the substitution of the limit, you are not going to get zero over zero, neither infinity over infinity, but infinity minus infinity or infinity times zero. So when we search up in there, what are we going to do? We are saying that then you use algebra to you use algebra to get <laughs> then you use algebra to get zero over zero or infinity over infinity that we know already. Because if it's not in the indeterminate form, you can use the hospital rule. So infinity minus infinity that means use the hospital rule. Or infinity times zero that means you have to use the hospital rule. This is the undeterminate form. So in the indeterminate form that we use the hospital rule. Alright. So we look at our first question. We look at our first question. And we did by substitution. You can see that we get here 1 over 0, which is infinity minus. Here we get 1, and here we get 1 over 0, which is infinity. Alright, so this is infinity over infinity. So when it such happen, how do we do or what do we do in order for us to get infinity over infinity or 0 over 0, which is the indeterminate form? Then after that, we go and find the LCM, alright? So we are just about to apply algebra. So the LCM is then here we get S, alright, minus that is, you know, that this go into this. So this will cancel this, this to be this. We learn with this. Let me do it well. They cancel this and to be with this, then it's one plus one. So you get one minus cos s. Minus this cancel this. So minus s. Alright? So for the numerator, that is what we are going to get for that value. So the limit as s approaching value of one minus cos s minus s. All this over that, and that is S minus S cos S. Now, let's see if we are truly on the indeterminate form. Now, zero here, you, get, you are going to get it to be one. Zero here, you are going to get it to be zero, all right? So here one minus so everything on the numerator is zero. In the same way, the denominator is zero. So we get zero over zero. So you can see that with the idea or our simple knowledge in algebra, we have changed this question to indeterminate form. So we can now use the hospital. So please, I leave here for you to continue. Alright, so you take the derivative then the derivative Alright, so you take the derivative of that and when you do that I wish you do that on your own Alright so, when you apply that, then you are going to get sin s to the limit as s approaches zero. So you get sin s minus 1 over then that one. So you are going to, when you simplify everything, when you differentiate and simplify everything, you are going to get 1 plus s. 1 plus 
S sine S minus cos S. I wish you could do that on your own, all right? Because you differentiate this that uh, here, yeah, when you differentiate it, but when you differentiate it, when you differentiate it, you apply product to it. All right. So the limit at n approaching zero. Now, now that we are done with the differentiation, let's do the substitution and see if you are going to get zero over zero or infinity over infinity. So by substitution here, you can see the sign of zero is zero minus one over one plus. So with this, we are going to get zero. All right. Then minus cos of zero is one. So we end up getting negative one over this gives this is going to give us zero. All right. So here we get zero here. And now when you get zero here, negative one over zero doesn't mean that you are having indeterminate form, which is zero over zero or infinity over infinity. No, it doesn't mean that you have the indeterminate form. This means that the answer is negative infinity. That means that this is getting to negative infinity. All right, so that is what we mean by that. Therefore, the limit of this function is as x approaching zero will be reaching negative infinity. All right, now as Sometimes you can see this from the right, from the right, from the right, but it's still the same thing. You will still do the substitution, you still do the substitution of zero. Alright, you still do the substitution of zero. And if it is minus, it means that it is from the left. It's still the same thing. You do the substitution of zero. Maybe if it's from the left, which is negative, you will still do the substitution of Zero. All right. And this, we are saying that as x approach zero from the right, then the value should be getting or will be reaching negative infinity. So that is what we have for such case. What I want you to take note well here is that when you do the substitution, you get infinity over infinity. What do we do? We apply our idea in algebra through the LC and then we move on. Very good. Thank you. Looking at the second question. With the second question, we are going to look at the limit. As S approach zero from the right, we set S times all right. So the first thing to do is for us to go and do the substitution. So when we do the substitution of zero here, now here we know that cosec is one over sine, and sine zero is zero. All right. So you can see that here I'm talking about this side. This is one over sine, and sine zero is zero. So with this we are going to get one over zero, which is infinity which is infinity. Multiplying now here to the same thing, all right? We have zero here, sine zero is zero. Sine zero is, sorry. Coming. Oh, all right, so the sine of zero is going to be one right now, it's going to be one. All right, it's going to be one. And 1 minus 1, we are going to get 0. And mean of 0, we get 0. Alright, very good. So here you can see that we have something like 
infinity multiplying zero. And as we know, we are saying that we are going to look at the case whereby we get infinity minus infinity. And that one is established in the first question. Here, in the second question, we are getting the second phase, which is infinity times zero. And when such a what do we do? We said that we apply our idea in algebra to make it be in the indeterminate form. So, we move on to do that. Please, what we are doing is very, very, very important, alright? Because we are applying it. We are applying it. So, we have the limit as s approaching zero from the right. We know that this is the same as 1 over sine s. Multiplying the 1 minus sine s. Very good. So, having this, then to use our idea in algebra, that is why we have expressed to set to the 1 over sine s. So now, if this is giving zero, sorry, if this is giving infinity, multiplying this zero, and it's giving us infinity over uh, infinity times zero, then we can rewrite this as the limit as s approach zero of lin one minus <coughs> sorry lin one minus sin s over sin s. You can see that we haven't changed the question. Having this is the same as having this, is the same as having this. But let's see. If you can see that these two don't give the indeterminate form. But let's see if this is going to give the indeterminate form. The numerator is straight zero. Alright? And here, when we take the sign of the sign of zero, then we are going to get that one to be. Alright, so you see that we are going to get that one to be zero. We are going to get that one to be zero. Alright, and when such happens, oh sorry, I made a mistake here. The sign of zero is zero. So you get only one, and the one is zero. Alright, that is why here we are saying that it's infinity times zero. So here yeah, the sign of zero is zero. So we are now on the indeterminate form. We are now on the indeterminate form S. And if we are on the indeterminate form, then we can move on to take the limit of it by using the idea of Yositaru, which is the derivative of the numerator. Over the derivative of the denominator. Very good. Very good. So we take the limit of this. Sorry, we take the derivative of this and the derivative of this. You know what, how to go by that. So I'll just quote and go my way. So when you take the derivative of that and you simplify, you let it do it. You get 1 over 1 minus sine s times the derivative of the inside, which is going to give us negative cos s. Negative cos s. And the whole of this over the derivative of this, which is cos s. Very good. So, having that, then this is going to be negative cos s over 1 minus sine s, the whole of this over cos s. Alright, this is over 1. So the limit as s approaching the root of negative cos s over 1 minus sine s multiplying 1 over cos s. So you can see that this will cancel this. Then we get the limit as s approach zero of negative one over one minus sine s. Very good. So that is what you are going to arrive by taking the derivative of the numerator and the denominator. So having this, then we go 
and do the substitution. Alright? So when you do the substitution, then yeah, the, yeah, we know that the denominator is going to be negative one. So take one minus sine zero. One minus sine zero. And that is going to give us one. And that is going to give us one. So you get negative one over one minus one. And that is going to let me check. Alright. So that is going to be negative one over zero. Okay. If you get negative one over zero, sorry, this is zero. This is rather zero. I don't have a calculator with me, that's why. So you don't worry. In case I say anything or I write something which is not in the right way when you confirm from the calculator, then you try to do the right thing for me. Alright. So that is why the result gives me the one. So what we mean is that the limit at s approaching the room from the right of this function is going to give us negative. Wow. All right. Please, the most important thing here is that when is when infinity multiplies zero or when zero multiplies infinity, how do we go about it? So that is, we use algebra for us to get it in in the form of the indeterminate before we take the derivative of the numerator and the denominator. All right. I'll be back with the case whereby a function is dividing another function. When such happens, how do we take the derivative of it? In fact, that's going to be the